All right, listen up, because this is where the game changes. China just dropped official footage of their Fujian carrier launching the J-35 stealth fighter with an electromagnetic catapult. Yeah, you heard that right. Electromagnetic, not steam, not some clunky prototype, but a fully operational email system. And guess what? They didn't just launch one plane, they launched three types, the J-35, the J-15T, and the KJ-600 airborne early warning aircraft. All in one go. So much for the China can't innovate narrative, huh? <laughs> Let's break this down real quick. The Fujian isn't just another floating airstrip. It's an 80,000 ton statement piece designed to tell the world we're here, we're serious, and we're not playing catch up anymore. And now with this video, Beijing's practically screaming from the rooftops. Look at us. We've got stealth fighters flying off a supercarrier and we're not even breaking a sweat. <laughs> bold move, real bold. But here's the kicker. The J-35, that's China's answer to the F-35C, a fifth generation stealth fighter taking off from an emails catapult on a non-US Navy carrier. First time ever. Meanwhile, the US Navy is still ironing out the kinks on their own Ford class email systems. So yeah, the gap between them and us just got a hell of a lot smaller. Today, we're diving into how this happened, why it matters, and what it means for the Indo-Pacific and beyond. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. For decades, the US Navy has had a monopoly on advanced carrier aviation. Nuclear-powered supercarriers, steam catapults, and now EAMALs. These were the tools that kept them leagues ahead of everyone else. But here's the thing. China didn't just copy the playbook, they rewrote it. They skipped the steam catapult phase entirely and went straight to electromagnetic. Why? Because they could. And because they knew that steam was yesterday's tech. Now, think about the challenges here. Developing an EAMAL system isn't exactly like building a Lego set. It requires precision engineering, insane amounts of electrical power, and a level of integration that most navies can only dream of. And yet, there's Fujian doing exactly that, launching not just lightweight drones or glorified trainers, but heavy-hitting assets like the KJ-600, a flying radar station that gives the PLN eyes in the sky for hundreds of kilometers. Oh, and did I mention the J-35? A stealth fighter with internal weapons bays, long-range missiles, and enough firepower to make any adversary sweat. All launched from a freaking catapult. So what's the problem? The problem is that this isn't just about China catching up. It's about them leapfrogging. While the US Navy's been bogged down with delays and budget overruns on the Ford-class carriers, China has been quietly building a fleet that's closing the gap faster than anyone expected. And now, with Fujian's trials, they're showing the world that they're ready to play in the big leagues. This isn't just a technical achievement. It's a message. And the message is clear. We're coming for you. All right, so how did they pull it off? Let's start with the star of the show, the J-35. This isn't just some knockoff of the F-35. It's a homegrown beast built specifically for carrier operations. Folding wings? Check. Reinforced landing gear? Check. Catapult compatible launch guard? Double check. Oh, and let's not forget the internal weapons bays capable of carrying six missiles while maintaining its stealth profile. This thing is designed to hit hard, stay hidden, and operate far beyond the horizon. And here's the kicker. The J-35 isn't just a one-trick pony. It's part of a larger ecosystem. Pair it with the KJ-600, and suddenly you've got a carrier air wing that can detect threats, coordinate strikes, and dominate the battle space, all without needing a single land-based radar. 
It's almost poetic, isn't it? The same technology that once gave the US Navy its edge is now being used to challenge it. Hmm. But wait, there's more. Remember that email system? Yeah, the one the US Navy's been struggling with for years? Well, China's version seems to work just fine. Smooth launches, reliable recoveries, and no signs of the glitches that plagued the Ford-class carriers. Coincidence? Or just another example of how China's willingness to take risks pays off in the end. Either way, the result is undeniable. Fujian's air wing is now a force to be reckoned with. Now, let's talk about the unsung hero of this operation, the KJ-600. This thing is a game changer. Think of it as the quarterback of the carrier air wing, calling the shots, spotting threats, and coordinating strikes from miles away. With its AESA radar dome, it can track stealth aircraft, cruise missiles, and even incoming drones before they even know what hit them. <laughs> and thanks to Fujian's EEMALS system, it can take off fully loaded, ready to extend the carrier's reach by hundreds of kilometers. But here's the real twist. This isn't just about China's naval ambitions. It's about rewriting the rules of the game. The KJ-600 doesn't just give Fujian an edge in the South China Sea. It gives China the ability to project power across the entire Indo-Pacific. Taiwan? Covered. The Philippines? In range. India? Yeah, even them. And if that wasn't enough, the J-35's integration into the air wing means China can now deploy stealth fighters wherever they want, whenever they want. No more relying on land-based airfields. No more limitations. Just pure, unadulterated power projection. Oh, and let's not forget the psychological warfare aspect. By releasing this footage, China's not just showing off, they're sending a message to the US, to Japan, to India, and to anyone else who thinks they can challenge Beijing's rise. The message is simple. We're here, we're ready, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Brutal, isn't it? So, what does all this mean? On the surface, it's a story about technology, innovation, and ambition. But dig a little deeper, and you'll see something far more unsettling. This isn't just about China building a better carrier. It's about challenging the very foundations of American naval supremacy. For decades, the US Navy has been the undisputed king of the seas. But now, with Fujian's trials, that crown is starting to slip. Think about it. If China can field a fleet of carriers equipped with stealth fighters, AEW and C aircraft, and EMALS systems, what happens to the balance of power in the Pacific? What happens to alliances like AUKUS or partnerships like Quad? Suddenly, the US isn't the only player with a blue water navy. Suddenly, the Indo-Pacific isn't just a backyard, it's a battleground. And let's not kid ourselves. China knows exactly what they're doing. Every step they take, every milestone they achieve, is part of a larger strategy to reshape the global order in their image. So, what's the takeaway here? Simple. The era of uncontested American dominance is over. Whether we like it or not, China's rise is inevitable. The question isn't if they'll catch up. It's how fast they'll surpass us. And judging by Fujian's trials, that day might come sooner than anyone expected. Bet Washington didn't see that coming, did they? All right, let's wrap this up. China's Fujian carrier isn't just a ship, it's a symbol. A symbol of ambition, of innovation, and of a nation determined to rewrite the rules of the game. And with the J-35, the KJ-600, and emails all working together, it's clear that Beijing isn't just playing catch-up, they're setting the pace. So, here's the million-dollar question. 
Is China's naval rise a threat or an opportunity? Are we looking at a new Cold War or the dawn of a multipolar world? Let me know in the comments below. And don't hold back, I want to hear your thoughts. <laughs> but hey, if you're too scared to comment, that's fine too. Just don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Because trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming next. Stay sharp, stay informed, and remember, the future belongs to those who prepare for it. This is Military Forces Unleashed, signing off. Catch you on the flip side.